Good evening, and thank you for attending tonight's school committee meeting. Could you please join me in saluting the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Could everyone just join me for a minute and please stand? The um, Brockton Public Schools lost a, uh, a little angel this, this, uh, this week, Ava Duchesne. Ava Duchesne was a four-year-old at the, at the Gilmore School and um, she had some complications and uh, we lost her unfortunately. Her family uh, is certainly in mourning and uh, we, our hearts go out to the Gilmore School, the staff, her fellow students uh, in the Brockton community. Um, she um, was with us for a couple of years at the Gilmore and um, she was uh, dressed as a little bumblebee for Halloween and the Halloween parade there but uh, unfortunately some medical complications arose and we lost, lost her. So a moment of silence please. Thank you. Uh, Madam Superintendent, would you like to say a few words? I would. Um, you know, we talk about it often here. We talk about it in good times, and we talk about it in bad times. You know, we truly are a family. Every child is important to us. Uh, today, certainly, um, I, I will tell you that right away, the support was there. The support was there for the family, uh, for the teachers at the school that work with little Ava, uh, to the students in the classroom. A note went home alerting those families. Um, our crisis management team, which, which really is counseling, you know, were brought into the school. Uh, they're well trained and able to continue to provide that support. Mr. Minicello, I don't think anyone could have said it better. Uh, when you talk about an angel, there's nothing more heartening that when you're having one of those difficult days, going into any school makes people feel much better. But to go and see the little ones, to go and see, you know, the love in their heart, uh, everything they do, their they, they truly are innocent. They love being there. They enjoy their friends. They enjoy lunch. They, wh whatever you can do for them is, is just so special. And I know uh, each one of us here feels the same way that um, our hearts go out to the family and certainly to the Brockton Public School family and Brockton community. Um, thank you, Madam Superintendent. Well said. The uh, mayor could not join us this evening. He's uh, recharging his batteries from a tough uh, political season and uh, he needs to um, uh, rest up this evening uh, from a long day and a long uh, obviously week. Uh, so he um, expressed his regrets with regard to Ava and um, we will see him at the next meeting. Um, we have the next item on our agenda is our hearing of visitors and it's my pleasure to invite City Council President Dennis Ianeri, who tells everyone and reminds us all that he was a learned member of the school committee, so we uh, welcome Council President Ianeri. Thank you, Dennis, for coming in this evening. Thank you, sir. I think this furniture is getting old, though, isn't it? The council is going to give us money. Yes, the council. That that, that, that's an allocation by the president. Wonderful. I just said the furniture was getting old. I didn't say anything about purchasing anything new. <laughs> but in any case, uh, good evening, Mr. Vice Chairman, and thank you, uh, thank you for allowing me to speak uh, this evening, and as well, good evening to uh, Madam Superintendent and members of the uh, school committee. I don't believe it's probably maybe this might have been the second time that I've come before the uh, school committee to, to speak under public. Uh, under public visiting uh, since I was a member here. And I remind everybody, you're correct, Mr. Minicello, when I was here for uh, some 20 years as a, a member of the Brockton School Committee and uh, very proud of it. And uh, during some difficult years, to be truthful with you, right when Proposition 2 and a half was, uh, I always say, when it was birthed and, and it, and it um, as I've always said, it, it did some devastation to uh, the city school system as well as the uh, city. And with that being said, what I'm here to do this evening is to formally invite 
you all as school committee members to uh, the naming of the facility that we now have on Crescent Street, 60 Crescent Street, which was the former Crescent uh, Credit Union building, and you presently have your parent information center in that building, and we also have our health department uh, working out of that building. And on Monday evening, which is next Monday, November the 9th, uh, we're going to have a dedication of that building, and it's going to be named the Mayor Paul V. Studinsky Jr. Building. Um, and Mayor Studinsky, who for many, many years was a public servant here in the city of Brockton, started back in 1955 at the tender age of 24 and ran for public office and uh, was unsuccessful and came back and ran again and became the city council from Ward 4 for a good many years and, and uh, at that point um, went on to become a state representative for a term uh, and then uh, also unfortunately lost that, that seat to, uh, then it was um, Michael Creed and, and then he uh, uh, came back and he became um, also city councilor at large and stayed for a few years and then, then ran and became mayor under the difficult times of um, 1982 and 83, um, which were not easy times. But that being said, just a little bit of history so that everybody knows um, who Mayor Studinsky was. And that's what brought us to the, to the uh, situation where uh, Ward 1 City Council Tim Cruz made a um, uh, resolution before the uh, City Council to uh, you know, name the building after Paul Studinsky for his many, many years of dedicated service. And uh, the City Council voted uh, to do that in the spring and we've met the point now where we're ready to make a uh, small dedication ceremony and some of you may have already noticed that one of the signs is already on the building if you look at the Montello side um, which faces the building faces the Montello Street from that uh, area they're going with whether you're going uh, south or whether you're going uh, north and you'll see that the uh, one sign is already up and we have another sign that we're going to be placing up uh, which will be over the entrance as you're coming east from uh, Crescent Street similar to the same um, sign that you have on your administration building which is named for another former mayor uh, the late Mayor David Crosby so um, continuity there to be truthful with you and what we've uh, tried to do and it also coincides with the fact that we just um, also did our uh, City Hall Plaza over and if you haven't been there to see that um, I ask that you you take a look at it because it's it's really came out very nice and uh, we as councilors have to say it, it's really nice when we leave there at night to see that it's well lit um, it, it's there for handicap purposes it's been um, taken care of for those situations that it w wasn't before so it all go in size coincides with what we're trying to do but I just wanted to uh, bring to your attention and uh, you will be receiving an invitation in the mail uh, in regards to the event um, and before I do forget I do want to thank um, Madam Superintendent and Deputy Superintendent uh, Mike Thomas and of course your new public relations girls uh, Michelle Bolton for working with me um, in regards to putting this together um, the mayor gave it my task as City Council President and I wanted to get it done um, so that it would be done is, is how I like to get things uh, done to be truthful with you so in any case Monday evening um, and we're going to start at, at 6 o'clock to 6 30 with some refreshments and then we're going to have a, a, a brief uh, ceremony um, there's going to be other guests there former uh, former mayors have been invited former city councilors I'm sure there'll be some former school committee members as well former people dignitaries so it'll be a nice little event but um, it's going to be uh, in honor of a, a great public servant um, that, that served this city for a good good many years so I just wanted to let you know that um, definitely uh, you're, you're a part of, the, part, of the, part of the process here, so I didn't want to leave anybody out. So with that being said, I appreciate the fact that I could uh, speak about it this evening, and uh, thank you all, and uh, have a wonderful meeting. Thank you. I want to say again, um, uh, Councillor Ionieri and I spoke briefly, and we wanted to thank the city for such a beautiful building. Uh, our parents are able to come. They actually have places to park. Um, it has certainly been a building that we're proud of and dedicated just about a year ago. So we're excited to have it named after former Mayor Studinsky. And as I shared with uh, Councilor Ionieri, in uh, although I've been in Brockton many, many years, the first campaign I ever worked on was the studs for mayor campaign back in those early 80s. So I'm, I'm very, very pleased to see the building named after uh, former Mayor Studinsky. Wonderful. Okay. Um, normally we would do the consent agenda however I would like to take one matter out of uh, order uh, ladies and gentlemen we have a hero amongst us 
let me introduce to you Selena Rosa, an 11th, uh, an 11 year old Plouffe Academy student in the sixth grade. She was recently honored by the Brockton Fire Department and State Fire Marshal's Office for acting very heroically when a fire broke out at her home in August. Sinlina smelled smoke, went outside, saw that there was a fire in the house. Um, her family was sleeping. She went back inside and got her family up and also when she came back out realized that there were other people in the home on the uh, second and third floor that were not out yet and um, heroically she went back and alerted everyone and thank goodness thank God everyone uh, got out and escaped any injury so um, it's our, my privilege to invite her up to receive an award do you would you like to say something madam superintendent I, I, would. Um, I just actually had the pleasure of meeting uh, Selena um, you know, you certainly have said it well, you know, we, we are so proud of her, uh, her bravery, her quick thinking. Um, hopefully those are lessons that she learned somewhere along the line and knew exactly what she needed to do. And these, again, are the kinds of young people that me, make me feel proud to have worked so many years with these type of students, with their families. Um, she's also a youngster, I hear, that does very well in school. and. Tonight, uh, as we honor her, we want to bring her down here. We've got some special things for her. And I also have to bring to your attention that when I went up to say hello, uh, Selena is here with her grandmother, her mother and father, very, very proud, and her brother and sister who attend the Downey School. So again, I'd like to uh, invite Selena to come down here. Beautiful, yeah, absolutely. Wonderful. There's a movie about you. It's called Supergirl. It's in the movies. Come over here, honey. Oh. I'll put you right in the middle. Uh, we have a wonderful certificate of appreciation from, uh, for you from the Brockton School Committee. And this is something that hopefully you can uh, keep in your room and show your friends and family. I think everyone's going to be very proud of what you did, and we're certainly very proud of you. And we also have uh, a special shirt from the Plouffe School. I'm told it's a track shirt, and I'm told that Mr. Fortz wants you on that track team next <laughs> year. So can you make sure you do that for us? All right. I'm going to just hold this right here. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please join us in congratulations. Such a young age. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, now we will go back to our schedule of events, which is the consent agenda. Uh, the consent agenda is a uh, method in which the school committee bundles the routine business of the school committee, and um, it's an opportunity for any member of the school committee to remove a particular item if they would like more clarification or would like to discuss it. Um, so, is there anyone that would like to remove any items from the consent agenda? Mrs. Joyce. Um, letter E. Letter E. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Okay. Uh, anyone else? Okay. Um, can we have a motion then on items A, B, C, D, F, G, H, I, and J? Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Wonderful. Mrs. Joyce, letter E. On letter E, with regard to approval of the Plouffe Academy out of state overnight field trip to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, um, I'd like to invite Principal Michelle Nazarella down to the, the uh, microphone. I promise I won't keep you long. And given that this is the last time you'll have to appear before us, I just wanted to congratulate you on the wonderful trips that you've put together for these students. It's obviously a success. 
you've come a long way <laughs> in planning it. Yes, we have. And you, it's been just such a wonderful experience for the students and I wish we could do it system-wide because I think it gives our children an opportunity that many of them would never get if you didn't put this together for them. So I just want to thank you and I look forward to hearing about your trip to Philadelphia and I just want to say that we're very proud of what you do for our students. Thank you very thank much you. for your thank words you. of no support. Questions. I really <laughs> appreciate that. <laughs> Mr. Minicello, Superintendent Smith. Um, let me just comment a little more on what Mrs. Joyce said. Mrs. Joyce always asks very poignant and well-intentioned questions. Yes, and she and as a result of some of her um, questions over the years with respect to the field trips, um, we've been able to overcome, we've been able to overcome um, issues and obstacles. And, and, you know, so I credit her with her diligence um, because it basically irons out some of the problems that we may have on one of the trips. So we're all in this together and, and she certainly helped to uh, f have you fine tune some of the details to make for a safe trip that we all want for our students. So uh, Mrs. Joyce, you've um, been ass assisting. This overnight trip for the Cliff Academy uh, to Philadelphia. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Great. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Did you want to say anything about the trip? Um, the Rocky theme song will be the um, <laughs> song for the PowerPoint presentation when we come back and we're going show to, you the highlights. We're going to Gettysburg as well. <laughs> Philadelphia and Gettysburg. Philadelphia and Gettysburg. Yeah. Yes. And Amish country as well. They'll be having They're dinner. They're having dinner. At Amish a farm. style. Yeah. They'll have a great time. June 10th to the 12th, three days, just like the other trips. Uh, a full packed schedule, <laughs> as usual. It is. Okay. They're going on a historic ghost tour at night on Friday when they arrive in Philadelphia. I don't know if you've been to Philly. Have you been to Philadelphia? It's a wonderful city to visit. Yeah, it's very manageable. It's very they're similar to, to Boston. Zoo. Yep, the Philadelphia Zoo is Yeah, they're going to be yeah. there on Sunday yeah. before they leave. The steakhouse. Pass. Steakhouse? Yeah. Steak and oh, the steak and cheese, the yeah. Philly oh, steak. Oh, steak, steak and cheese, yeah. yes. Oh, yeah. oh they yeah. have to go some. You're right. Oh, we, yeah. we should right fill that into though. the agenda. It's Philly. <laughs> it's, I'm sorry, Madam Superintendent. It's a Philly cheese steak. It's not steak and cheese. Down there, it's cheese steak. And for some reason, they do taste a little bit better. I don't know why, but they do. So. And their football team is called the Eagles, not Eagles. No, we, we don't want to talk about them. <laughs> They're a little bit uh, below us, so um, anything else? Anyone else want to ask a question? Sounds great. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Thank, Thank you very much. Okay. Um, communication of the superintendent. Uh, Madam Superintendent. Uh, the first thing that I would like to talk about, and I know we have a, a number of meetings to go, um, you know, I, I, this is my third year as superintendent. I've certainly been around many years before at school committee meetings with so many of you. Uh, as time is winding down, I can't thank you enough. Um, I start to count the nights that you're actually at Central or in meetings, uh, you know, representing us so well. And you know how all of us feel with the job that you've done. Uh, you certainly will be sorely missed. But you do have still a little bit of time left, so we're going to be talking about some additional meetings to go. Uh, but I do want to recognize tonight, I I'm looking out in the audience, uh, election time is an exciting time for, for all of us. It's a chance for uh, renewal, uh, new things happening, which is what's happening on our school committee. We have five new school committee members that will be joining us uh, after January 1st when they uh, are inaugurated. Is that what it is? Sworn in? Sworn it's sworn in. in. Yep, swearing in. So uh, tonight I want to congratulate our five uh, new uh, school committee members. I see out there uh, Lisa Plant from Ward 2. Lisa, congratulations. Um, I don't know if I have Mark D'Agostino from Ward 3, but Mark D'Agostino has been to a number of the meetings and will be representing us in Ward 3. Uh, ward 4 is Brett Gormley, and Brett worked for the Brockton Public Schools for a number of years. His dad still works here. So he's certainly well known to us. He also has been at a number of meetings. Um, ward 6 is Joyce Azak. Uh, she's very excited to join us. I spoke to her earlier tonight. And Ward 7, I see Tim Sullivan uh, up in the back, and, and he is not new to any of us here. 
So we, we welcome Tim back and uh, I thought it was interesting when I was reading Mr. Sullivan that you really did miss being on the school committee. So, so we're pleased to have you back. I also want to congratulate uh, Mr. Minicello. I was watching the numbers last night. I told you I was a little nervous when they came up with zeros on TV across the board. <laughs> He assured me it was just a glitch. It was a so. technical glitch, I'm told. Technical <laughs> glitch. But congratulations. And to Judy Sullivan, congratulations Thanks. for again coming back and, and for your re-election. It was a tough race for Judy and I, but <laughs> somehow we pulled it out. Right. Sheer <laughs> sure will. I also want to congratulate certainly all of those uh, city councilors, councilor at large, uh, our mayor uh, being re-elected. We all know there's a lot of work ahead of us. If the election is behind us, it's really time to move forward. You'll hear me talk about a number of things that are truly on uh, our front burners. But I also want to tell you, um, again, uh, I had a conversation with Ray Henningsen this morning. Um, he has worked diligently, uh, certainly represented you know, our children well. He has two children in the system uh, and certainly uh, brought a lot of information to us. I've asked him to you know, certainly help us out with the super PAC or so many ways that parents can get involved out there. It's important for us to have all of you involved, uh, certainly uh, the supporters of our children and of education in the Brockton Public Schools. So, um, a number of things. Uh, first of all, let me start with the student representative. I have Gavin here today. And uh, Gavin, would you like to give us an update on what's happening at uh, Brockton High School? Of course. Um, so we had Halloween hallway last Thursday and student council and several clubs and organizations participated in holding 665 children and parents. Uh, Veterans Day Assembly is next Tuesday, November 10th at 9 a.m. in the auditorium. Local veterans are invited. The John and Abigail Adams Scholarships Assembly is Thursday, November 19th at 9 a.m. in the auditorium. 291 seniors re are receiving the scholarship. This, and this is the first year that science is included in, uh, as a requirement. Um, I, along with 90 other of my peers, are being inducted into the NHS program at 6 o'clock on the 23rd. So you're at Brockton High School. Yes, we are. Well, first of all, congratulations. Thank so that you. is the National Honor Society. Um, as again, academics, John and Abigail's Adams Scholarship winners. Uh, those of you that haven't had an opportunity to see the Veterans Day Assembly, uh, probably one of the uh, most important dates in our calendar. I know the community looks forward to what the students do to recognize those very people that fight for the freedoms that we have each and every day. So uh, a lot of things happening at the high school. Um, I, I do want to take a moment uh, to talk about a situation that did happen at the high school this past week. Uh, many of you are aware that uh, we had um, an altercation at the high school. Uh, a parent uh, came onto the high school grounds uh, with uh, her, her student. Um, there was uh, an outside uh, open courtyard, which happens during lunchtime. Um, we, we've done for, for many years. The children, especially in weather such as we've been having, get a chance to go outside for a little bit. It's certainly supervised. Um, the altercation took place there. And one of the things I want to say is um, we feel very strongly, and I think you know this, that we have paid attention to the safety and security, certainly, of our students in every one of our schools. We continue every day to make sure that we have uh, protocols in place, that we have security cameras, that we have supervision, that we continually send staff to training if something were to happen. And when this did happen, the one thing that I will say is we certainly avoided it becoming much larger than it could have been because what happened was immediately controlled and it was controlled because of a number of, our, a number of reasons. We had teachers that are on site that knew how to act very quickly to intervene, put themselves uh, in, in a manner to make other students safe. The students knew what they had to do was to clear certainly out of the way. One of the things that we will do, and Lieutenant Mills is here this evening and I'd like to ask him to come down here, also uh, Principal Wolder, because I want to share with the public. I first of all got a letter from Lieutenant Mills. The school police were right on site. He happened to actually be there uh, out at lunch also. As I said, they intervened very quickly. They were able to subdue the situation. Uh, there was, you know, minor 
cuts and scrapes, but one of the things that Lieutenant Mills did was sent me a letter and what he wanted uh, everyone to know that three of our teachers, and he called them out, uh, teacher Deborah uh, McNulty, uh, Jeffrey Driscoll, and Christopher Sullivan, immediately took action as they have been trained to do, but he wanted to commend them for, again, you know, kind of going above what you would call the call of duty. Uh, so I want to, to recognize them this evening. And also Principal Walder did what she does best. She immediately communicated to the parents, you know, very transparent, not only about what happened, if they needed any follow-up conversation, if there were children that were concerned and needed to seek advice from counselors, peer mediators. These are things, unfortunately, that we deal with. When things happen, and this was something that happened outside of school and was brought into school. But I want to let parents know that we're there to work with you. Our guidance counselor, our administrative staff is available. But we feel, and, and I know you join me in this, those of you that have walked the halls of Brockton High School. We have a campus that is an open campus like I think every other high school campus in Massachusetts. A place where parents feel welcome coming our students, they're out on our sports fields. We all attend football games and soccer games. And, you know, uh, we talked about the Veterans Day event. We invite the public to come on to our property. That's how we want to keep it. We will continue to, to look at, as I said, our protocols. We will be doing an after incident review, but uh, we feel very strongly it's a safe place. And, and Gavin, before I turn it over to Lieutenant Mills and Principal Walder, I, I'd like to ask you, you're there day in and day out. Can you talk about how you feel uh, on our campus and in our buildings? I actually don't. It doesn't. I, I, I feel that it hasn't affected me in any way, specifically, or any of my peers, because I don't hear anybody talking about it as much as when it happened. So I think that everybody has moved on from it and feel safe as before it happened. So I basically you're telling me that each and every day you're comfortable being in your classes? Yes. Um, before oh, Lieutenant Mills speaks, I would like to commend the school police. Um, they did a fine job um, and de-escalated a, a situation that could have easily gone uh, in the opposite direction. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the individuals involved was actually, you know, had a electrical taser and was pulling the trigger and the taser was going off. You could hear the electrical current. Um, the school police, in my opinion, used great restraint, fantastic judgment um, in the way they handled it and the way they um, took care of the threat. Um, and uh, I just want to commend them. They, they, you know, again, I think they realize they're in a school setting with children, our students, and um, used extreme restraint and, and should be complimented as well. Thank you, sir. I'll certainly pass it along to them. Um, as you all know, there was an incident that afternoon. Um, I wrote that letter. I felt that accommodation should be made to those three individual teachers. They did a fantastic job. They in my opinion, went outside the scope of an educator. They physically placed their body in between an armed individual and other students. They had the presence of mind to immediately call, not only identify that they had a problem, but immediately identified <coughs> over the radio so we knew that it was an outside threat. This wasn't students fighting. They actually identified that this was a foreign threat on school grounds. We were able to respond quickly. Officer Brett Baker and Officer Kevin Smith did a fantastic job. The student was disarmed within moments. Everyone was placed in custody. And they actually did it without using any police issued weapons. That is a judgment only an individual officer can make at the time in a split second. I commend them. I think they did a fantastic job. Um, I'm glad to see the training pays off. As the committee knows, they spend 100 hours a year in in-service and professional development and training for situations like this, from the officer's response to an active shooter to an emotionally disturbed person. Um, their training and education certainly paid off that day, and I'm just grateful that no one was seriously injured that day. And I have to add, in addition to those that aren't named here, the number of professional staff from the school department that responded outside. I honestly believe by the time we took the suspects 
from the pavement to put them in the car, I don't think there was a student outside left. Every student that was outside at the time was inside the building and in a secure location in what seemed to me like half a heartbeat. So although these three individuals deserve a commendation, the entire staff at that high school deserves credit. Thank you. And I would just add, again, the situations that we face some days are challenging. And to know that the adults who are responding to those situations handle them with such professionalism and such care is what makes Brockton High one of the best places anybody could ever work, anyone could ever send their children. Because we did have a number of people outside immediately. Those three were there. The housemasters, assistant housemasters, other floor teachers responded. And as Lieutenant Mills said, all of the students who were outside were immediately uh, brought back into the building. The first thing we did was to determine that they were okay and if they needed counseling support that it would be there for them. We didn't just have them go back in, rush into the building and back to normal. We checked on them. We wanted to make sure that they were all right. And that was part of my call to parents because things happen in the community that kids bring to school and they're upset and they see each other and they respond. And so it's important to us that if parents know something's going on that may impact their child at school, that they call us and let us know. Because we do have adjustment counselors, we do have peer mediation, we do have intervention specialists, housemasters, assistant housemasters, who can all intervene and support students to resolve conflicts in a way that doesn't resort in what we had to deal with last week. I have met with that student and that parent and that situation has been dealt with and beyond the discipline was also a need for counseling for that family because there are some serious issues there that impacted them and their decision making and so even as a school system dealing with that we try to support that family as well. And so it is important that we continue to work together and communicate better and that if people know something is going on to inform the school so that we can make sure we do everything to keep every child safe. Uh, anyone from the committee? No? Mrs. I, Joy? No? Okay. And, um, we can't control what people bring into school, but the way that you have have dealt with it and the professionalism you show in the training has, is, has been demonstrated in, in how you were able to diffuse the situation very quickly. And safety is, is paramount and, and you show it every day, not just in bad situations, but every day the safety of our students is always number one. So I commend you. Um, these are the times that all that um, training does show and between the school police and the uh, staff um, that it's well worth our investment in both our school police force as well as our professional development for our teachers. Thank you. Yes, um, I think one of the major things was the communication that went on. As our student rep said that there was no after incident kind of incident that went on at the school which is very important a lot of these youngsters sometimes that's something that they don't always have the best of judgment I'm not talking about all there are a few but getting the word out immediately to everybody makes a big difference the other thing sometimes you have to look at is the media sometimes they will report things a certain way you need to contact the officials that are involved the school department etc they were the ones that were there. They're the ones that can tell you exactly what's, what's happening. And some of the reports that came out three or four days later were a little bit inflammatory. But here again, I have to commend everybody. It worked out, and in particular, because the word got out immediately. Thank you all. I just want to finish up by saying, um, you know, when we have our discussions, uh, certainly about budgets, um, it hasn't felt good to us the past couple of years with, with cutting positions and, and being strapped in a budget. But the one thing that you continued to push last year, we talked about additional counselors when you talk about 4,200 students at the high school. And as the principal just told you, you know, it's, it's about checking on the students, working with the families, reaching out, making sure there's referrals. 
uh, and some of even the little bit that you've done at this point I think is paying dividends and it is certainly an area that we would like to continue to focus on as we move forward not just Brockton High School but this is uh, you know unfortunately for, for all of us you know the social and emotional piece the uh, piece about uh, students working together and trying to solve their problems is our job you know there are many times where there were certain things that were left for the families that's not the way it is we have to work together to make sure these children mature are able to deal with conflict uh, are able to certainly get an education our main goal but you know we have to continue to support our students and our families and I thank you for doing that in such a compassionate way okay and I'm, I'm gonna uh, I, we do have our principal Sean Ahern here this evening uh, representing North Middle School I just want to go over a couple of things and I think I'm gonna have him be the finale um, I think we'll enjoy uh, enjoy his presentation about what's happening at North while we're on the high school I will tell you that this uh, past week I had the honor as I do every year the Mass Association for School Superintendents and it depends on the size of your high school or high schools allows superintendents to give out awards for excellence this year we had four awards that were given out and the students that received the awards were uh, Kendall uh, Brinson in the Yellow House, Samantha Connor in the Yellow House, Samantha Hand in the Yellow House, and Heidi Rivera in the Azure House. These are your top four students at Brockton High School right now. Obviously, uh, Yellow hit the jackpot this year. But these were students, again, that excel academically, that also excel in other areas with talents. It could be, again, on the sports field, uh, certainly band, drama, uh, extracurricular, you know, community involvement. Um, their resumes are quite large and their futures are also as large as that. So we're very, very excited to give those uh, awards out. Congratulations to those parents, those families, and, and especially to uh, the teachers and staff at Brockton High School and all of the schools in Brockton that prepare such wonderful students for us. Yeah, I would just like to say that um we're very proud of my niece, Samantha Connor. It is your niece. It's my niece, and I'm very proud of Samantha Hand, who's one of my best friend's daughters. And her dad is Darren, and we've known each other since the first grade. So, um, two very special uh, award winners in my life. Well, every parent was there. Everybody was represented. Uh, a wonderful reception. Uh, Thank you to Kathy Ledger and her staff that put this together and uh, did a great job for our kids. And the report finally came in. Um, the Chapter 70 report is in. Um, it's, I'm sure all of you have had an opportunity to look at it. I was actually very, very pleased on a couple of notes. Uh, I'm very pleased that when I think about last year when I've told you our Chief Budget Officer Aldo Petronio went to every single hearing around the state to make sure that the message was loud and clear what was affecting an urban center like Brockton. I had the opp opportunity to go to the Cape on a Saturday. Um, the commission was very large. It includes uh, state senators, representatives, uh, uh, certainly school superintendents, um, people involved uh, in the educational field. And what came across loud and clear were that they're looking at the cost of educating special needs students. They're looking at the cost of English language learners to a district, especially with numbers as large as ours. They're looking at health care costs, the inflation factor. But most importantly, and probably one of the biggest surprises for us, was looking at the poverty rate. So that being said, I no sooner sent that out to you, it was hot off the press the night that I received it. I was then dismayed to see um, uh, Rep Representative DeLeo, who started to talk about the cost of what this uh, commission recommendations would cost the state. Now we're not, and it's in the millions and millions of dollars. So one of the things that is very clear, and the commissioner spoke on this, is that they are not supporting our students the way they need to be supported when you go back and look at ed reform and the intent of ed reform. That being said, and they talk about even incrementally trying to support these uh, different recommendations over time. It cannot be the one thing that, very, that frustrated me when I sent out the letter uh, from Representative DeLeo was when the comment is made, when you have a commission like this, you please some people, and there are other people that won't be as pleased with some of the decisions that you make. I don't think that interests any one of us. I understand 
it has to be something that we can afford. And obviously we have to be responsible in that. But their responsibility is under Ed Reform to make sure every child has those opportunities. And we're falling farther and farther behind. And I'll talk a little bit about that when I briefly talk about PARC. But as far as where we go from here, uh, we very much were waiting for that report to come in. Uh, presently right now we have the Mass Association for School Superintendents and uh, School uh, Committees going on right now as we speak. I do intend to speak to uh, my group there. The uh, report is in and we will talk about where we go from here. So I think we have our work cut out for us. I'm not sure if anyone had a chance to, to kind of look over the report or what your thoughts are. Mrs. Joyce. If I may, in addition to the poverty level, I was very happy to see that one of the priorities is early childhood education. And for an urban district that is critical for us, just as well as all of the other factors that were identified in the report. But none of it means anything if it's not followed up with legislative, um, prior, legislative um, 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 pressure to fund these these priorities and um, once and we could and we've already seen it with uh, DeLeo in his comments about politics already getting in the way and that's very unfortunate and that's why it's important that Brockton continues on with our lawsuit and not waver from that as we go forward, especially with the new members coming on board. Um, a few of the members have made it their priority um, that we go continue and they support continuing going forth with our lawsuit because I just don't trust our representatives and the, the political culture to do it for us in a timely manner. We, we lose children every year. The longer it takes us to phase in these, these um, priorities and to fund these priorities, there are children lost every year and they don't get those years back. So we really do have to pressure the legislature and go forward with our, our lawsuit with our new representatives on the school committee. This report basically is nothing that we as a committee didn't know, but it, what it does is it highlights those issues that we've all, all discussed and it um, is basically a reference and an exhibit that we can utilize in, 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 in the lawsuit basically saying hey not only are we saying it but your own commission is saying it so you know so it, it's basically I think a great tool and, and, and provides us with you know an independent body that supports you know the arguments that we are planning to make so it's, it, it's, it's really timely very timely and, and, and certainly enhances our um, prospects of being successful because again it's an independent commission pointing out all the needs that we know what urban you know what urban educators and urban districts need in order to be successful so it's, I think it's a great uh, outcome for us in terms of going forward. I don't, uh, part of my impression of the report was that it might actually expand our pool, especially the inclusion of low-income students. You know, I think this has always been viewed as like this issue of urban, um, urban centers against kind of these, you know, wealthier, smaller, more rural areas. But there are plenty of rural areas in our state that that are, you know, maybe don't struggle with some of the English language learner needs or special ed needs, but certainly struggle with things like the healthcare costs associated with staffing you know, their school districts and, and the poverty levels uh, of some of those smaller, more rural communities. And I wonder if that might not be something, you know, for lack of a better word, that we can kind of leverage to actually bring more people on board with as it relates to this equity lawsuit to make it more than just about urbans against everybody else, right? That when we take, everybody else somehow loses, but that this is an issue that kind of expands beyond the borders of, of urban school districts as it relates to kind of the needs and the unmet needs across our state um, and, and, and kind of build a, a, a bigger level of buy-in, a, a larger coalition to kind of move this lawsuit forward. Uh, I think there'd be some value in exploring that. And you know, I don't know how the urban superintendents kind of cooperate and work with kind of the 
the rest. You know, you guys have your, your group, and I know you talk specifically about the needs of urban school districts, but how, you know, where your ability is to reach out to some of these other districts that, for different reasons, share similar problems, right, and, and engage them in, in this issue with us. I sit with urban superintendents. Many of us are dealing with the same issues, and, and I could spell them out here. Uh, uh, they're actually spelled out in this report. But I also sit down with you know suburban superintendents and Mass Association for School Superintendents, as well as Mass Association for School Committees. Represents everybody. So again, this isn't just a Brockton issue. Um, it, now let's go back to 1993. You know, with Ed reform coming in. You know, we're always proud that it was the McDuffie case. And I'm going to tell you something that makes me really worried. And again, I, I, I have to say this. I spent uh, quite a bit of time at Brockton High School. I think it was last Monday. A number of things were going on. I spent time up there. And in running from one meeting to the other, I had to go through the core building. And I had to stop along the way in a science class. And there was the teacher, excellent a lesson on the board. Kids were just getting in. They were engaged. Everything was the way that it should be happening. And when I walked in, the, the teacher kind of looked at me and looked a little startled. I was standing in the door and you know, asked if everything was OK. And, and I told him everything was fine. But I was truly counting heads. And I was in a lab, a science lab, that probably should have had maybe between 15 and 20 students in the class. You know, there were close to 31 students in the class. There were students that were sitting not at the lab tables. And the teacher looked at me and said, everything is fine. I'm just really glad that I have seats for everybody in here. Well, that's not OK. And I bring that up because that's shades of McDuffie. If you go back to years before 1993 with Jamie McDuffie, Scott McDuffie served on this very board. And the one thing that was talked about, I can remember like it was yesterday, I think it was a social studies class. There were 36 kids. Kids were sitting on the radiators. They didn't have the books that they needed. So that should worry us. That should worry us when those are class sizes, not just class sizes at Brockton High School. I walk into middle schools. I walk into elementary schools. I'm continually counting heads. Because with all of the research that's done, and you've heard me say numerous times, nobody does it better than the teachers in the Brockton Public Schools and our staff. As far as children in poverty, as far as our English language learners, our special needs youngsters, those are the things that we do really well. But we need to make sure that we have the resources to be able to move forward. And I bring this up because when I talk to you tonight about park, the park scores are embargoed right now. We as a district were able to start to look at them. Dr. Cancel, I can't thank of enough. He, uh, within a weekend, was able to put together our first glimpse of what, what our park scores look like. And we'll share that with you once the embargo is lifted and it becomes public. Um, you know, we're looking forward to having those conversations. But one of the things I'll tell you right now that's very clear to us, and on the 17th, I think the 16th and 17th of November, they will make a decision about what is coming for our high stakes testing. We've all heard the buzz. Well, it's not going to be PARC. You know, is it going to be MCAS? MCAS is a, a wonderful exam. We're, we're the best in the country. You have the commissioner talking about an MCAS 2.0, which brings in the technology piece. Well, the one thing that we're seeing, and you know, where, you know, it's not really being talked about as much as we would like, is I can't thank enough our schools that chose to be park online schools, because we did that on purpose. We made sure that we had the Ashfield School, the Huntington School, the Downey School. I'm trying to remember. I'm looking out Hancock. there. Hancock. Our Hancock, Raymond. They were our online sites so that we could see how the kids reacted to this type of a test. And the one thing, actually, that Executive Director June Saber McGuire said to me when we started to look at those schools that were online looked like those schools that had done better in the past dropped a little bit in comparison to some of the other Brockton schools that took a paper and pencil. And the one thing uh, Mrs. Saber McGuire said to me was, I can remember watching a little girl at the Huntington School, third grade, sitting there with her computer doing her English language arts composition. And technology-wise, she got kicked off the computer. There's a glitch. And all of a sudden, the adults are coming around, and we're trying to get her back on the computer and get her set up again. You know, who can sustain you know, that type of thinking, a little eight-year-old child? And did the eight-year-old child have the opportunity for technology when they were in kindergarten? Or you talk about the preschool. And when you talk about some of the suburbs and you talk about, 
again, some of our homes in Brockton. Not every child has a computer at home. Not every child has a laptop and an iPad. And a, I mean, we can name all of those devices. We do the very best we can, but we're slipping. So I, I've said a lot in talking about the Chapter 70 review. I want you to see all the pieces together as they make a decision about park, as we make a decision making sure that our children can remain competitive, making sure that we have smaller class sizes. So again, our children receive the same type of education that children all over the state. So in answer to getting back to your question, you're right, this, this is our time. You know, this is our time. I think we have some information of, of a long commission that listened to people all across the state, and it isn't just a Brockton issue. And the other part of that is, it isn't just the state's job to do this. There are federal monies that have dried up all over the place. We can talk about all of those grants. We also have our own city that's struggling. I know we're working hard. The mayor and I talk often. That's why we talk about things such as bringing businesses in. You know, even if it's controversial, I understand that. And I don't want to be a superintendent standing here, you know, in the middle of controversy over what comes to the city. But the bottom line is we need to find a way to support education in this city. So uh, I think a lot of things are happening. I think we're poised to move forward. And uh, I think I'm looking out there at the new school committee members. We've got, we've got a lot of work ahead of us. So. <laughs> Did I worry you? <laughs> They're still here. So. <laughs> they haven't left. I hope they're aware of how many meetings there are. <laughs> we, um, have, we have much less. <laughs> Next item. Okay, I want to remind everybody that the conference is going on on the Cape, and I'm very proud. I mentioned to you that uh, Vice Chair Tom Minicello uh, and Department Head Mary Ellen Corain will be part of. Uh, uh, a panel at the uh, conference talking about the breakfast in the classroom. Um, we're very pleased to have that conversation with people all over the state. It certainly has made a difference for our kids. We continue to uh, roll out the program. Uh, most recently, I believe it was the George School that came online, you know, 900 students. Um, there have been, been things brought to me, I, I have to say this, that there was a concern uh, about a, a parent concerned about a pop top being served to a child. And, you know, we want to have those conversations with parents. It's not a pop-tot that you would, you know, be able to go to the supermarket. This is, again, we work with Tom Burke. There's much less sugar, you know, but we are looking at items like this for the children to not only be able to start their day, have a nutritious breakfast, and also something for a snack a little bit later. And it really is making a difference in the lives of our students. It's a whole wheat pop-tart. It's a whole wheat Pop-Tart. Yes, it's not as sugary as the regular Pop-Tarts. But the kids are excited and going home telling their parents, you know what, I don't know what's happened, but I was happy to get a Pop-Tart into my children at a young <laughs> age. And I think many parents are like that. Whatever you can get into them, you know, as you're rushing to try to get out the door to school. So, again, this seems to make a difference for our kids. They're attentive, they're able to have sustained learning, and, uh, you know, we hope to have it system-wide within the next year. Uh, just on that note, uh, a year ago, many of us went over to the Brookfield um, uh, when the uh, commissioner was here just to witness how um, the program worked. And um, I thought it uh, uh, best that I refresh my recollection. So this morning I went over to um, the Raymond and um, saw a kindergarten class and also a fifth grade class um, participate in the program. and. Um, both of the, um, the well, the, the one of the teachers, the fifth grade teacher, you know, said at first I wasn't too thrilled with the idea um, because she thought it was going to uh, take up a lot of time. She thought it was going to be, uh, you know, basically a circus. Um, but when you when you witness the preparation and um, the process that's in place. Um, the teacher really uh, has very little uh, to do with respect to, you know, the breakfast itself. Um, they have um, a couple of students who are the breakfast ambassadors and they um, go down and, and one gets the milk cart and one gets the food cart and the kids love doing that because it's sort of like a uh, a, a privilege. You you can only do that if you've been behaving and you've been uh, 
doing uh, your work. And um, basically, it, 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 it's a system. And um, you know, the kids go up in the morning, take 15 minutes. They get, uh, get their milk and they get their packet of food. Uh, the teacher has an opportunity to give them, while that's going on, uh, some refresher work in terms of what went on during the day. So as the kids are having their breakfast, there are worksheets. Uh, today there were math worksheets. I witnessed the kids um, filling out at the same time they're having their breakfast. And it also provided the teacher with a little time to do some um, uh, administrative work uh, on her part. And uh, you know, she said that uh, she's now bought into it. Um, and Principal McGrath basically told me and gave me some statistics that um, the visits to the nurse's office have decreased substantially. Um, kids no longer are saying that you know they have a sore belly or um, you know hunger pains, that sort of issue. And um, it's a substantial reduction in visits to the nurse. She said that she sees that uh, uh, tardiness has substantially decreased that the kids look forward to it. Um, uh, I, you do not have to take breakfast in the classroom. In one class, there were three students who uh, opted out and basically said, uh, I asked them, oh, how come you're, you know, you're not eating today? And, she, and uh, one was a girl and a couple were boys. And they said, oh, we ate at home. We're, you know, I'm all set. And they were just doing their work. Um, and um, you know, it, it seems to be working out I mean, very well. Um, you know, the, the bottom line is that um, we want our kids to be able to concentrate and to be able to uh, have that uh, energy that they should in the morning uh, so that they can, you know, start fresh and um, concentrate on their work. I mean, we all know as adults uh, when we're hungry how, you know, irritable and grumpy we can get and, uh, you know, you 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 accomplish I think a couple of things. You accomplish uh, uh, setting a, a clean slate for the day. Uh, the kids can start learning. You also accomplish you know if if a kid's grumpy, um, you know it's you're, you're eliminating a potential disciplinary problem uh, because you know the kids through no fault of their own hungry and, and a little bit grumpy like we all get. So um, I think it's a good thing for you know, a, a district like Brockton, where we all know we have high, um, low-income student populations. Uh, so I, I think it works. Now, is it going to work in all communities? I don't think so. I mean, communities that are more affluent and um, you know, just might say, hey, we, we don't need it. The numbers are just so low you know, uh, that we don't have to implement a program like that. But I think for right now, it's, uh, it's, it's a positive for the city of Brockton. So. So, and, and the way it was managed today, I was very impressed. I'd be remiss if I didn't take an opportunity to mention blessings in a backpack while we're having this conversation. You know, they're, they operate kind of within our schools, but are really organized independent of, of the district. Um, you know, and it's a partnership that's been growing and growing. They started, I think they came and presented to us about a year and a half or so ago now. And uh, at that point in time, they were at one school serving about 30 kids a week. Um, there was a packing party just a few weeks ago right here at the high school. Um, since that time, me and a few other school committee members and some members of the community have been able to kind of work with them to create some community and school partnerships. I think this year they're at five schools um, and serving over 200 students. Um, at the time they came and visited us, they were basically providing meals for one kid um, on Fridays. You know, and you're talking about through with the help of superintendents, with or with the help of um, um, principals and guidance counselors and teachers at the school, identifying kids who really, in many cases, don't or have or can't count on food through the weekend. You know, they get their meals when they're at school. That's the only sure meal they have. The breakfast they get at breakfast in the classroom, the lunch they get, and maybe the snack or sandwich they get as part of an after-school program. And, and kids and families in real need. And, um, and they identify those children and then they provide them with a bag of food on Friday that is intended to help them get through the weekend. And oftentimes those kids talk about how they share that food with siblings um, and, and other things. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, but, but the need is clear. Um, they've reduced the costs 
through a partnership with one of our local food banks. It used to be about $80 a kid to give them a backpack every weekend of the school year. They've gotten that down to about $60 a student now, and they're serving over 200 students. Um, Tom Burke has been awesome. Um, they have basically a home base. These, these amazing women who started this are all connected to Brockton Public Schools, some as former students, families, members, teachers. Um, but they were doing this out of their basement and driving these meals. They didn't live in Brockton. They drove these meals here on Fridays and handed them over to a principal. And now there's a storage space here. They packed 1,100, meal, 1100 bags for kids for the next several weeks worth of food with, a, with more volunteers than they could handle. They store the food here at the high school now in the central kitchen. Kitchen staff, you know, our, our, our food service staff, they come on Saturday morning and help, you know, organize this. The, the food is now delivered to the schools that are cooperating in this program with the food delivery that comes out of the central kitchen on Fridays. It, it's incredible. Tom Burke has allowed his staff to start wearing jeans, doing casual Fridays, and they donate a dollar or two. They've raised like $600 already this school year doing that. Some staff, he said, don't even wear jeans. They just give a dollar every Friday. But I mean, 600 bucks, that's 60 bucks a kid. That's 10 kids who are going to have meals every weekend for, the, for this whole school year just because we got really generous staff members and students have been helping out. I mean, it's, it's awesome. And, and uh, it's a program that I've, it's very close to my heart and, and uh, you know, has a strong desire to continue to expand to serve more students the need is well beyond their capacity right now. Um, you know, the holidays are coming up, and I know people always look for ways to help around the holidays, and if anybody who might be watching has an interest in trying to find a way to help, I can't think of a better program. You know, 60 bucks, you know, to a good program. There are no overhead costs. All $60 is used to buy food that feeds a kid for the whole school year. Everybody on this thing is volunteering. Everything else is free. Um, if you're interested, you know, please reach out to me or reach out to the superintendent's office and they can connect you with the right people to, to provide some resources, whether it's a volunteer, whether it's a, a check that can feed one kid or a couple kids for the rest of the school year or allow the program to expand and serve more kids. Um, it certainly would be appreciated. The need is great. And, and breakfast in the classroom is something we can do as a district to help support that need. And, but we can only do it Monday through Friday when the, schools, when the kids are in school. Kids go on vacation. I mean, these are kids who, when they go on vacation for a week, Christmas vacation, at a time where most kids are really excited to go home, there is a, a huge group of students who wonder how they're going to eat that week. I mean, that is, it, it's heartbreaking and beyond my own comprehension. <laughs> I, I can't imagine that. I, I really can't. And putting together a, a new website site where in the process I'm not sure currently, but uh, we've got Michelle Bolton, our new communication director, and what we might be able to do is uh, eventually get something online where people can donate. You know, we can come up with a campaign, as you said, $60 feeds yeah. a student. So that's something that we can we can certainly look into. C3, donations are tax deductible. They're organized independent of the school district, but they cooperate very closely with our schools and our principals and yep. our food service providers to make this program work for kids and identify the right kids those in, in greatest need, um, you know, I, it, it just, you know, it speaks to the value that people who care about kids and work in the school district bring to the table every single day. Breakfast in the classroom is awesome, and I'm happy to see it growing. Yeah. And, and, and Blessings in a Backpack is, is a program that I will never stop advocating for. So um, thanks for humoring me for a few minutes. Yeah. You know, the other thing I just want to say, and I know you're going to be talking about this just so the public understands. Um, you know, there have been some questions uh, about time and learning, and the commissioner has come out and said that this 15 minutes, and it shouldn't be more than 15 minutes, but it's 15 minutes, and that's why when Mr. Minicello tells you, you know, it kind of works like clockwork, you know, the bags come up to the classroom, it's distributed, work is happening before school work, the day is started, it's cleared away very quickly, and the children are able to move on. But this wouldn't happen without, you know, it's a collaboration. And back when I first came on as superintendent, Dr. Moran, uh, Kim Gibson put together a plan. So I know tomorrow you'll be talking about a plan that works that includes all the stakeholders. You know, there is a teacher teaching in that classroom, and it does make a difference that the straw 
fits into the little milk cotton correctly without having everything spill and disrupt the day when you're talking a five-year-old. So there are things Tom Burke has been excellent to work certainly with. The teachers have done six weeks of planning. Not every school is built alike. Not every school is on one level. There are elevators. How do we get things moving? So it doesn't happen, and I, and I know in your discussion tomorrow, it'll be interesting to see if those kinds of questions come up. But it, it involves all the stakeholders, including the parents, and I think, uh, as usual, it's why this is a success for so many of our students. And that's one thing that the teacher stated, and that is that she was so surprised. She thought that this was going to be sort of dropped on her and she had to figure out how this is going to operate in her classroom. She was amazed at the planning that went into it and basically the process was pre-formulated and you know she tweaked a couple little things to her liking but you know it was well thought out and um, it wasn't uh, a burden at all and um, you know, she's very supportive of it now because she sees th the benefits of it. She sees the um, the mood of the students. She sees, you know, the uh, that morning uh, bolt uh, jolt of energy that these kids now have. Um, so it's it's something that I think uh, you know works for many of the kids in the Brockton Public Schools. You know? I'm looking forward to hearing you speak about it tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, basically, you know, to be honest with you, at first, I was, you know, I sort of retracted from it, and I was like, w are you kidding me? But when you, but, you know, being the very open-minded person that I am, right, Andy? Um, um, you know, I saw the error of my ways, and, um, you know, it's, it's something that I think is very good for kids, you know. So. I like when you see the error of Oh, well, you know, it, it doesn't happen often, but, you know, very so often. Just so he's not grumpy. I was thinking yeah. the same thing. Sure. <laughs> well, I haven't eaten dinner tonight, so, I, you know, but I'm still, I'm okay, I'm okay. Are we having okay. a North presentation? I was just going to invite Principal Shauna Hearn down here. Great. I think you'll be very pleased to hear his presentation about what's happening uh, at North Middle School. Thank you for affording me the time to talk about North Middle School. We're very proud at North Middle School uh, of our academics accomplishments, uh, but at North, character is as important as academics. Every morning, I thank my student scholars for coming to school, and I tell them, work hard and be nice. Now, at North Middle School, every teacher has read the book Mindset. I don't know how many of you are familiar with the book, um, but I'll give you the brief summary. Um, Carol Dweck, and through her research, has come to the conclusion uh, that intelligence is not fixed. You can grow intellectually. And we believe that at North, but we also believe that character can also be grown. There are skills that can be taught, skills that students can learn, and skills that students can practice. The character strengths you see before you involve those that will lead to good habits in the classroom and help kids handle pressures and challenges. We talk about persevering. And when we talk about that, we mean work at something until we find a strategy that works. A lot of times people think persevere means never give up. Well, that can be frustrating for some students. We tell them use good resources and find good strategies that will help you get through. We talk about grit, and that's that motivation, determination to finish and do their best work. We talk about self-control, concentrating only on their work, being accountable to themselves. We tell kids, control the controllables, stay focused. Optimism, we want kids to be optimistic. We want them to realize they can achieve with effective effort. And of course, curiosity. We want kids to face challenges with positivity. Another area of, of is community service learning at North. Uh, we have our Kids Take Action 
program. Uh, students um, take responsibility for the dances at the school, for games, the talent shows, the concerts. They go out into the community for holidays and help. We have our garden club. As you see before you, um, the front of North, if you've ever driven by, it's uh, expansive, um, a lot of grass. Over the last two years, we've been working on a garden in the front of the school. Um, it has grown quite a bit. Um, in the summer and, and uh, you see in the spring, the tulips are growing. And in the fall, the other perennials are growing. Uh, please take a, a drive by and you'll see some of the still blooming plants there. Uh, they, they love to keep the grounds clean and they want to make it a beautiful school. We also have the sign squad and they're in charge and take responsibility for changing the sign we have out front of the school. One of the things that we have at North is a connection with Jared Monty. For those of you who do not know, uh, Jared Monty uh, served in Afghanistan. Uh, unfortunately, he gave his life for his country. Um, he was the recipient of the Congressional Medal, Medal of Honor. Um, about five years ago, I asked his father to come to the school to talk to the kids during Veterans Day. I want the, the students at North to appreciate Veterans Day. And I really wanted him to bring what his son stood for. And his son had good character. And his father talks to the students about those character traits, about working hard. Uh, Jared was a great student. He worked hard in school. Unfortunately, because of financial reasons, he chose to uh, go into the Army. Uh, and try to work towards his college degree. Perseverance. Jared uh, was on the smaller side. In school, he was good at baseball, but he loved basketball. Um, his father tells of a story how in eighth grade, he did not make the basketball team with the school. Uh, he stuck with it. He worked over the summer. Freshman year, he tried out. Again, he did not grow so much. And again, he did not make the team. He still stuck with it. Finally, uh, as a senior, he did, he did make the team. And he performed um, quite well, actually outperforming a lot of the varsity players who were on the team two or three years. Mr. Monty talks about his son as not being a successful person, but a person of value. He talks about the time he gave away his bed. Um, he had a friend who needed a bed and he had just gotten a new one, so he gave away his new bed to his friend and kept his old bed. Uh, he talks about how he cut down a spruce tree in his yard to give a needy family a Christmas tree. And his father wasn't too happy about that, but then he understood. <laughs> At many times uh, in his service, he volunteered his own duty to allow other soldiers to spend time with their families. Uh, Jared had no uh, kids, and he felt that um, fathers should go home to see their kids and their wives. The basic message that he s tells the kids is, one, work hard, always. Set goals and work for them and be of value to your family and community. We hope to have him again uh, in the next couple of weeks, um, but it gets now busy for uh, Mr. Monty. He has a lot of engagements. At North, we have uh, quite a few partnerships with the community. Uh, the Bridgewater State University program, the Bridge program, that's a two-week program for our seventh graders. Uh, they go to Bridgewater State University, spend two weeks on campus uh, working with professors. They're in the classroom uh, and they live on campus for those two weeks away from home. Uh, the Y Summer Leaders program, that's in partnership with the Y and East Middle School. Um, Eighth graders or eighth graders who are becoming freshmen uh, participate in a summer long program um, and they learn leadership strategies. Um, we talk about students, especially leaders, being special. 
doing special things. And I always tell all those kids, bring the E, bring the energy, because that's what leadership is about, giving energy. And of course, we have our financial literacy program that uh, Ashfield also participates in that program with the Empower Yourself program, Mr. Turner. Uh, we've had many successes uh, at Gillette Stadium, uh, and we co they continue to go on field trips to Bentley University and other uh, financial institutions. And of course, we have our after school program, and I have a short video here for you.
Okay, thank you. for me is when I'm in the building is everyone is a part of the school uh, there's something for everyone and I have to commend Deputy Superintendent Thomas because the gym looks beautiful you know it's certainly the outside grounds I mean it's uh, I know we have a long way to go mm -hmm. but uh, certainly some of those improvements have you know the uh, literacy uh, digital literacy up in the former library uh, there's been some nice additions to North absolutely absolutely Anyone else? I mean, it, what you what we saw is great. I mean, it's and we've seen it in a lot of schools that you have kids learning, why, and they they're having fun, and you know it's like sometimes they don't even know they're learning, but you know they're engaged and they're learning, you know, like you said, literacy, math skills, uh, technology, you know, fantasy sports. I mean, you know, these kids can probably pick football teams better than I can because I'm horrible. But uh, it's great to see them, you know, adapting to uh, you know lesson plans and not even realize they're doing it. I mean, that's that's really a talent. Absolutely. Andy. The, um, the YMCA summer leadership program is that just at the Brockton Y? Uh, correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it doesn't leverage like the old colony center. And we have a Y branch in Stoughton and East and. No, just the Brock. How many kids get to participate in that every Uh So east and uh, north, we send 20 each, so about 40 students. All paid for them, or are there costs associated for those students? Uh, no, it's paid through. We had a grant. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to present. Thank you. The subcommittee, uh, I wanted to schedule a retreat. I know Wanda is going to uh, try to find a night. We were hoping for maybe a Tuesday night where we do not have a school committee meeting. I know we have to take into account people's work schedules. Uh, Saturday seemed to be, I know we've got negotiations on those Tuesday nights. I'll have, well, I'll have Wanda get in touch with you. We'll put together some dates. And that's it. Uh, any unfinished business? No? Any new business? Ms. Clark. like to see if we could bring that to the forefront again. I know I've had a lot of inquiries about issues up at the high school from parents um, with kids who are not high functioning or on the lower end of the spectrum but somewhere in between and they feel like um, their issues getting lost, maybe not following IEPs and such and they wanted to bring those issues and kind of reinvigorate the CPAC and the advisory to the school committee. And of course you and I have spoken about this. Uh, when I first came on board, one of the things I came across under Mass General Law was you know, there needs to be an advisory, a special education advisory committee to the school committee. So again, I had mentioned to you that during my first year, I had gone to all of the CPAC meetings and you know, very informative, listening to some of the concerns of the parents. Uh, sometimes there were things we can solve. Sometimes there were things Laurie Mason had to look mm -hmm. into with uh, certainly her team. So again, um, I, I will make sure that I speak to Laurie and we put that you know, on the front burner and see if we can get the CPAC moving and also make sure that there is an opportunity for parents to present to the school committee any concerns that they might have. Thank you. Mr. Jordan. Yes, I was down to the conference today. What was very interesting is that you've got eight rows of vendors along the walls, about from here, this wall to that wall. And I'd say three quarters of them know us. Uh, most of them to deal with any kind of building kinds of things or what have you, you know, super uh, Superintendent Thomas and talk about how well he puts things together for them, etc. <coughs> and uh, it's just they anything that you talk about down there because as you're walking through, they're trying to sell us um, their whatever their products are. But they they know individuals by name. They're very happy with us, and a lot of them remembered me from last year 
um, which was also very good. And it's just, we have a reputation around the state that's, that's very positive. It's very interesting. And some of these uh, vendors are not just from Massachusetts. They're from other uh, places around the country. But they know about us. They know what we're about. And they seem to always want to involve themselves with us to pick our brains, if nothing else, to find out what's going on. So please keep the good work up. I assure you we will continue to keep doing that. Anyone else? No? Um, I don't believe we need anything for executive session. So if, is there any other business? If not, how about we entertain a motion to adjourn? All in favor? Okay. We're adjourned. Thank you for attending.